Hello there, adventurers, and welcome to Wall ADM. Today, I'd like to present my top 10 Halloween monsters for D&D. Now, while a beholder, a gibbering mouther, and a roper are all grotesque, terrifying monsters, you're not going to find them on today's list. Rather, I'm going to go with Halloween monsters that are synonymous with Halloween costumes, advertising, and horror movies. You know, the classics. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at the monsters with regards to why we fear them in real life, why our characters would fear them in D&D, and for the dungeon masters out there, I'm even going to include one quest idea for each of the monsters. So we've got some interesting ground to cover. Let's go ahead and get started. Top 10 monsters for Halloween. Before we get started, just a reminder, if you have not joined our Discord yet, I highly encourage you to do so. Come on over and hang out with me and a lot of cool folks that know a lot about D&D. Also, I have recently updated the tiers and rewards, so please consider supporting us on Patreon. All donations go to support the channel, whether it be through miniatures and train for the videos or for future giveaways. Number 10. Aliens. Why do we fear aliens? Probably one of the biggest reasons is our fear of being abducted or our minds being controlled. The fact that our brains could be scrambled or we could be taken to a different world and experimented on. This is known as astrophobia, which means the fear of outer space or aliens. Now in D&D, our alien monsters are easily represented by elithids or also known as mind flayers. These are one of the most terrifying monsters in Dungeons and Dragons. They are very intelligent, they have psionic abilities, and the power to emit psychic energy that can hurt the minds of characters and NPCs. However, their most feared attack form is that of their tentacles. And then on their next turn, they have the ability to suck out and devour the brain of their victim. Now, a possible quest idea using a mind flare is perhaps the player characters wake up in a strange world. They have been abducted, but now they need to escape. They fight their way through intellect devourers and all kinds of strange aliens and finally make their way home. Or do they? Perhaps the mind flayers have them in their lab and everything that they are experiencing is not reality at all, but in a controlled environment and playing out inside their mind. Or perhaps they do make it home and the mind flayers let them go, perhaps putting something in their mind that allows them to exert control over them in the future. And if they fail to comply, a little bit of psychic pain to go with it. Number nine, the scarecrow. One of the reasons that we could fear scarecrows is they look menacing and staring at them you don't know if they're real could they just come to life all of a sudden or are they just inanimate objects now the fear of scarecrows is known as formative phobia and a lot of this just generates from the fact that they look kind of real but something is just not right about their appearance so why would our characters fear a scarecrow well, in D&D, Scarecrows have a lot of resistances. They're resistant to non-magical attacks from weapons. They're also immune to being charmed, exhausted, frightened, paralyzed, poisoned, or being knocked unconscious. The Scarecrow also has what is known as a terrifying glare. If it, it targets one creature, it can see within 30 feet of it. And if they fail a wisdom saving throw, they are frightened and paralyzed until next turn. Now, if this unfortunate adventurer is by themselves, the Scarecrow will then take the opportunity while that character is paralyzed to just continuously rake them with its claws. Now, one of my favorite side quests involving Scarecrows comes right from Waterdeep Dragon Heist. This is actually a faction mission of the Emerald Enclave. And just outside of Waterdeep, there are farmers that are complaining about their livestock being slaughtered and killed, and they see things that are running through the cornfields at night. When the characters go out to investigate, they find out that there are scarecrows that are terrorizing the area. But even deeper on that level of thinking, once the scarecrows are taken care of, who was animating them? A mystery that can be solved over a few missions. Number eight, werewolves. One of our biggest fears about werewolves is the thought of being torn apart by their claws and their teeth, or 
We just get hurt enough and we live through it and become a werewolf ourselves. The fear of werewolves is known as lupophobia. And on a personal note, I experienced a little bit of this myself when I was a young kid, just got HBO and watched American Werewolf in London. Totally freaked me out. Now, why would our characters fear a werewolf in D&D? Number one is damage immunity. Unless you have a silver or magical weapons, you're not doing any damage to a werewolf. The second is it's multi-attack. It can throw out a claw and a bite and cause some severe damage to your character. And finally, if you get bitten by a werewolf and fail that constitution saving throw, then your character will be infected with lycanthropy, which basically means they're going to undergo a few changes the next full moon. Now, a possible quest idea that we could use is perhaps our characters are already infected with lycanthropy. We could use this as a one-shot idea, or we could even start a campaign like this. And our characters are have visions or memories of themselves running through the towns, and they remember seeing innocents slaughtered. And they wake up, and they feel like, I'm the werewolf. I did this. And, and they get this overwhelming sense of guilt, when in reality... We'll throw a little bit of a Dungeon Master twist on there as perhaps they only have fragments of their memories and they were actually down in the sewers maybe taking care of a few rats or things of that nature but the town has a few other lycanthropes that are actually doing the killing. Number 7. Vampires. With their abilities to charm, their supernatural strength, and their thirsty bloodlust, it's easy to see why many people would fear a vampire. Having these natural born killers sink their teeth into your throat just to drain you of your last drop of blood can be absolutely terrifying. The fear of vampires is known as sanguivorophobia. Why would our characters fear a vampire in D&D? Let's start with the fact that this monster is a challenge rating 13. They are one of the most powerful undead in the history of Dungeons and Dragons. In combat, their regeneration makes, it, makes them tough to take down. They can also summon bats or rats to fight by their side. Their legendary resistance allows them to succeed on a saving throw three times a day where they would have normally failed. And vampires aren't just extremely strong in combat, but they are also very, very dangerous in a role-playing atmosphere. Their ability to charm humanoids is absolutely devastating. And they have that high intelligence and high charisma that helps them get what they want and they can always draw allies to their side. Now, two possible quest ideas. The first one is from a, one of my favorite vampire movies and that's from the 1980s and it's called The Lost Boys. So our characters in a campaign or a one shot, they have to save an N NPC and we could bend the rules of Dungeons and Dragons a little bit. Perhaps one of the family members or a friend of the party is starting to become a vampire and starting to show signs of becoming a vampire, but they haven't fully crossed over into the undead yet. And in order to save this family member or friend they have to find identify and kill the head vampire again that is straight from the plot of the lost boys and if you have not seen that movie yet i highly encourage that you watch it great flick my second quest idea for you is to simply open up the curse of strahd arguably the best pre-written adventure in fifth edition number six evil dolls and puppets We've all seen them before. Dolls are puppets that look almost too real. They're unsettling and they're creepy. You can't go to sleep with one of these in your room at night. You feel like it's just staring at you, plotting its next move, trying to figure out how to take you out. This fear of dolls is called pediophobia. Now, why would our characters fear them in D&D? These little creatures can be manipulative, they can be malicious, they can be evil, and they're indistinguishable from regular toys. They can make it seem like our characters are going mad, or they can help set our characters up and frame them for murders that they didn't commit. When these evil little puppets are done manipulating the minds of our player characters, then they're coming for them, knife in hand, child's play style. Now a possible quest idea is the adventurers have been hired to rescue a noble's daughter. They succeed in doing so, but it does take a couple of days travel to get back to town. 
Along the way back, they notice the little girl's doll that she clutches tight to her. It's really unsettling and creepy. In fact, a few of the PCs may feel that the doll is staring at them. And that is because it is. Number 5. Clowns one of the things that makes clowns so unsettling and creepy is a feeling called uncanny valley. That is an unsettling sense that something may look harmless but is deeply wrong. And this is a lot of times attributed to clowns, dolls, scarecrows, things of that nature. Our connection to faces is a mental thing and we get deeply unnerved when a face isn't right. And the clown's makeup is exactly that. The fear of clowns is called chorophobia, and we've seen enough movies to know that these smiling psychopaths are nothing to be messed with. Now there's not a lot of clowns in the 5th edition monster manual, but you can find the grim jester in Kobold Press's Tome of Beasts. And this high challenge rating, Jester Undead, is definitely a formidable foe. It has the ability to have your character fall prone and laugh itself to death, and not only that, but it gives disadvantage on death saving throws. But if you're not looking for an undead jester to throw at your players, perhaps you could just create a wizard illusionist that hides its identity through its clown makeup. It produces terrifying illusions and gives off an aura of fear. Chaotic evil at its core. Now, a possible quest idea that you could use in an adventure using a clown. Perhaps the PCs are investigating the death of a noble at a local festival or carnival. An evil clown traps them in his maze of illusions, puzzles, riddles, and terrifying fear. Number 4. Skeletons now, skeletons have been commercialized enough over the Halloween years where we don't fear it as much as we used to. However, there's still that small percentage that do fear the skeletons, the malice that it can bring, the evil grin, and in fact, we may even look at skeletons and fear our own mortality. Why would our characters fear a skeleton in D&D? Well, they attack without mercy. They fight to the death. Skeletons can also be more than humanoid. We can have monster skeletons, minotaurs, dragons, and owlbear skeleton. The bigger the skeleton, the more dangerous they become. And we can also have hordes and hordes of skeletons coming at us. Animated evil. Now a quest idea that we could use is the skeleton of an extinct monster is missing from the museum. It's actually been animated and has taken off, probably busted through a wall and is now terrorizing the town. But the museum owners are very adamant that they get the skeleton of this extinct monster back without it being destroyed. Number 3. The Witch a few hundred years ago in our world history, we had a deep fear of witches. They could cast spells, they could put curses on us, they would bring about plagues, and they were the sources of bad luck. The fear of witches is known as Wiccaphobia. Now the equivalent to a Halloween witch in Dungeons and Dragons would be a hag. Hags are evil, they're manipulative, they are very powerful with their illusions, and they can go invisible at will. A few of these hags would even carry over the stereotype of a witch by having cauldrons of stew that are made with muddy broth and human parts. Now hags are very dangerous in combat, but they're even more dangerous in role-playing scenarios where they can try to manipulate adventurers into doing their will. Now a quest idea is actually a puzzle video on this channel called The Hag's Doll. Basically, the characters need to get something from the hag, but as part of the deal, she demands the return of a stolen item. When the characters find the stolen item, they start to head back to return it to her. But along the way, they find out that this item actually fits into a puzzle. Do they solve the puzzle, or do they bring the item back to the hag? Make sure you check out the hag's doll here on this channel. Number 2. Zombies whether it's the TV show The Walking Dead, a movie like Return of the Living Dead, or even a video game like Resident Evil, zombies have installed within us a fear of being eaten alive. Even worse yet, the fear of being bitten by a zombie, contracting the disease, and slowly turning to the undead. The fear of zombies is called kinemortophobia. Why would our characters fear a zombie in Dungeons & Dragons? 
The first ability that they have that can strike some fear is Undead Fortitude. Our characters have just killed off a zombie. They turned their back for a little bit, but the zombie made its constitution saving throw and it's back up and ready to attack. When the characters get at higher levels, we can start throwing hordes of zombies at them. So it's no longer just a couple that are that are wandering about the graveyard. Now they've got an entire town, 20, 30, 40 zombies coming at them. And like skeletons, zombies can come in other flavors. An undead ogre zombie, or even worse yet, and one of the most horrifying is a zombie beholder. Now a possible quest idea for zombies is that zombies are infesting a town and the characters must help get survivors out of harm's way and perhaps a PC is bitten and on borrowed time. If you use this idea in a one shot adventure, perhaps you begin with all the adventurers have already been bitten. They either need to get everyone to safety before their time runs out or perhaps there's a cure out there and they have to find it before it's too late. Before I reveal my pick for the number one Halloween monster for D&D, here are a couple of honorable mentions. The Mummy, A Black Cat, Frankenstein and Frankenstein's Monster, The Grim Reaper or Death, Bats, Spiders, Devils or Demons. Number one, Ghosts. In my opinion, one of the main reasons is because we can't see them. They could be standing right in front of us, breathing down our neck, and we would have no idea that they are there, unless they wanted us to know that they were there. The fear of being alone at night and an object goes flying across a room, or a door slams, or there's some strange noises or footsteps upstairs when nobody is up there. Those are all creepy feelings that ghosts can install within us, and it's something we can't see, so it just intensifies that fear. Now, if we were to go deeper into this fear, a lot of folks are very afraid of haunted houses. They believe very much that that a house or a building, something along that line is haunted with spirits and ghosts that are following them around. Some of them to cause malice, some of them just curious, some of them wanna communicate, but they have this fear that they are around. There's also shock scares, perhaps a cold hand on their shoulder or breathing on the back of their neck. And then another fear that a lot of folks have is a fear of being possessed by a ghost and having it take over your mind or your body. So how does my number one Halloween monster translate into the character's fear in D&D? Well, this challenge rating four monster, which is a ghost in the monster manual, has two nasty abilities. The first one is a horrifying visage where our characters must make a wisdom saving throw or be frightened. And if they fail this saving throw by a lot, they can age anywhere from 10 to 40 years. So especially for a human character, they can turn old really, really fast. Then there is also the possession ability. And if a character fails that saving throw, they become possessed by the ghost. And not only are they possessed, but it's almost like they have to get in the back seat of the car as they watch this ghost drive their body around doing as it pleases. Now, a possible quest idea that I'm giving for the ghost is actually taken from a movie called The Others. And this is basically that the characters are gonna be hired to remove ghosts and spirits from an inn. But as the clues start to pile and add up, they realize that they are the spirits. So that is my top 10 Halloween monsters for D&D. And again, I went with Halloween monsters that you see on advertising, that you see in Halloween costumes, that you see in horror movies, and how we would use them in Dungeons and Dragons. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what would be on your list for the top 10 Halloween monsters, or why you would fear in some of these monsters in real life, or why your characters would fear these in a game. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and on to the next.